All right, with our sculpt complete, it is time to move on to retopology. So right now we're in the sculpt room. We're going to move over to the retopo room. Oh, let me hide that. So I have this retopology object here from uh, the previous rock arch that I made. So in order to get rid of that, we can just hide that retopo object. However, to uh, retopologize this object, this voxel object, we need a new layer here. So we can just click the new layer button. I'm going to call this one Arch 2. Okay, ignore the UV preview for now. So, retopology. Now, with an object this complex, we can't really do um, automatic retopology. Uh, the algorithm for that will really struggle with all these different uh, cracks and protrusions all around the model, so we pretty much have to do this one manually. So let's get started. I usually will start with the points and faces tool, and to do that I'll just pick an area to start. Like let's start, well, let's just start right here. And I'll just place some points and then right click in between them in order to get a retopology object. All right, so to capture this and get the details that are on its side, uh, let's see. I'm going to have to put another point right here, kind of at the base, and then right click. We'll get a triangle there. That's okay. I'm going to put some points on the side right there, and then kind of just going around it. Don't want there to be too many. This is a game model after all. And then let's see. And yeah, I can place them like that. And then sort of place points going along the top right there. And I don't think I mentioned this at any other point during this tutorial. Uh, to change the pivot point of the camera, you just hit F while hovering over your model. So that can be very useful. All right, so that's one little detail captured. Now we can just kind of keep moving. Now I want to keep this relatively the same density as uh, this other one, so you see the size of the polygons right there? That's kind of the resolution I'm going for with this. So let me move that one up there a bit, and then place those like that, and then I'll bridge this gap here by filling that out. And as you can imagine, this can get very tedious very quickly, so I'm not going to show you most of the retopology process. I'm just going to show you how to handle a few different cases that you'll encounter across this model. So as you see, I'm, put, I'm going to place, pretty much place an edge going around this uh, corner on this little crater that we've got going here. Then if I move that down a little bit, then I can place two polygons like that. And you see that we get this edge going around the corner. Now granted, it does uh, kind of spiral a little bit, which is a problem, but uh, this edge does not loop back on itself. So that kind of behavior is all right. There you go, we're trying to maintain quads as much as possible. So I just filled in that gap right there. So that's one area. And then to expand it out past this, I'll just put, say, some points right there. Another point right there might bring this one out here. And then we can start to fill out other parts of the model as we see fit. So in a situation like right here where the um, angle between these two edges starts to get very obtuse, you don't really want to place one polygon because otherwise the um, difference between the size of your polygons will get quite absurd and it'll be harder and harder to maintain this um, 
this string of faces. If we were to continue this, it would have to go like that. And you see the uh, the angles we're getting in the corners of the vertices right there is not optimal. So when you get run into a situation like this, what you typically want to do is you want to maintain a quad structure by doing creating this kind of a pattern. So you see we basically took those two edges and extruded them out that way. And this will actually allow us to maintain a bit more clean topology. Fortunately this is not always the case but usually will help. So you see right here if I place a vertex up there at the top, no it didn't happen this time but I'll show you right here. So the way that these retopology mesh meshes in 3D Coat are rendered is that usually the retopology mesh will be rendered on top of your high resolution mesh. Uh, if you can see the high resolution mesh through your retopology mesh, then if you look at it from the side, you can see the high resolution mesh is extending out quite a bit further than your retopology mesh. And that's just a way for you to visually tell that um, it may be a bit more difficult for you to capture that detail when it comes to actually baking your texture maps. And so in this case, one solution is that I see there's a very slight corner going through these three edges, so I can try my best to respect that like so, and then just continue this topology around. So if we come down here, again, this is a very obtuse angle. So there's actually a couple different ways. As you see, we've got two different highly obtuse angles. Let's see, how can we swing this? So I put some edges right there. And then if I put another one right there, if I put another one right there, then I can, there we go. That kind of works. Because this model isn't going to deform in any way, uh, edge flow is not a huge concern. It's something you always want to keep in mind for good practice, but on a rock like this, we can get away with some pretty uh, messy topology. If I just quickly go back to the one I did earlier, then you will see I do try to keep edges following major features of the model, but in areas where the rock structures get very complex, like around here, then it's more about capturing the silhouette and making sure that you have good coverage of the model. And if I go to the uh, paint room for that, and you can see that really it's not a huge deal. You can't uh, see most of that. If I, you can't see most of that bad topology there. There are no nasty texture seams or any kind of stretching, so if your topology seems to be getting a little messy like that, don't worry too much. You just want to make sure that you avoid things like concave faces and n-gons. Really quickly, I do not know why my computer just started slowing down as much as it did. Hold on, me. That's not there anymore. Oh, wireframe's on, that's why. And just to quickly show you what that what I was talking about, a, uh, a concave face, so if I make a face right here, this is a concave face. This is very bad. You do not want that. That will be very difficult to UV unwrap and you'll probably get some texturing artifacts. And an N-Gon would be something like this, where you've got, we have a polygon in this case right here that has, you know, more than four sides. You can have a triangle and you can have quads. Those are great. But if you get more than four sides per single polygon, then you probably need to go in and you need to delete it and try again. So in this case, let's 
So again, like right here, we may want to try and respect this corner in the silhouette. So that'd be placing polygon right there, and then another one up top. Okay, I'm going to fill this out a little bit more, but uh, in the next video I will show you a few more techniques you can use with the retopology room in order to hopefully speed up your workflow, like how to work with large bands like this and how to use a few of these other tools before we get into UV unwrapping.